an amazing change of weather. This is how we put it in words. The weather has changed. Incredible thunder and lightning and rain. Can you hear the swollen stream downhill? Temperatures have cooled off. The wind is slower. For a while there was sunshine and now the clouds are darkening again. The weather forecast says another storm system is moving in from the west. Thunderstorm system, meaning when you see it on the satellite, on television, it is in color. Some movement, sometimes spiral movement, which is a representation of changes in wind, in temperature. Pressures, upper atmosphere, lower atmosphere, in tension with each other, and an explosion, lightning we call it, thunder. What is it that is changing? We just said it. Wind changes the temperature, the light, the moisture. Now the grass is wet, the stream is swollen, <clears throat> and we have water in the basement on our brand new rug. So, constant changes, and only through language do we pin it down in saying the weather has changed or the weather has consequences, which is a shorthand, not too accurate, of what is happening. Which is very similar to our expressing me and I in this. I am changing, I have a choice. I am this, I am that, as though there was some, something, some system, some entity inhabiting this body-mind. Let us look at this closer today because it has come up in many meetings and it is hard to grasp intellectually because the problem is an intellectual one translating itself into feelings and emotions about what I am, a while ago someone said in a meeting, but we are two separate bodies, aren't we? As we were sitting there on two chairs, occupying two different spaces, looking in two different directions. Different ages, different genetic material inherited from parents and foreparents, different upbringing, different language, different education, different fantasies, different world creations through these fantasies. Your world of fantasy is different from my world of fantasy. So we're not arguing that this is not so when we talk of no separate being. We don't argue or deny what was just said, that there are indeed in this room some 40, right now fewer, some people probably working in the basement, some 30 plus 
body minds. Let's not just say bodies, body minds. One unit, one wholeness of body mind. Just as there are thousands of leaves on a tree. I don't think that any two leaves are the same. Are they? I don't know whether anybody has bothered to measure. If leaves had brains that could produce thoughts and ideas about themselves, they would say we're all different. My little space are tight enough and your little space. But leaves have no brains. They work as one total tree with roots and air and sunshine and water keeping it growing. So what, what do we mean by I and me or self or ego? What are we talking about? Are we just talking about the two separate body minds, yours and mine, and there has already crept in another concept that there is an owner to this body mind, an owner to each body mind. Because this is how we talk, this is how we think, this is how we address each other. This is my body, separate from your body. And there's a strong attachment to this belief, emotionally interconnected with organs and tissue and glands and muscles which react when I feel attacked. Not just physically, but mentally, emotionally. What is going on? Are we all looking, wondering what it is about this owner, the owner of this body? What is it? Where is it? Is it touchable, seeable, discoverable, palpable? Or the more looking there is, the more questioning and observing in interaction and aloneness, the more it reveals itself that there are thoughts about my body, connected with pictures and emotional, mental attachments to these pictures about myself. And by picture, I mean not just an in one individual picture, but series of pictures and storyline about the past, my past my present, my future. Look, look for this owner, look for this me, and see what you find, what you come up with, in really wondering, inward gazing, as it were. What is this I, what is this me, that feels in possession not just of this body mind, but all that it has accumulated in ideas, in people, in possessions. So attached, so identified with it. What, what is it? What is it other than long time thinking? and piling up of thoughts and memories, remembered experiences about me, connected, one thought about me connected with feelings, 
It's not just thoughts floating around about me. They are interconnected with this whole functioning organism that functions to protect the pictures, protect the story, the concepts about myself and all that is mine or thought to be mine. It seems that every living thing, every living cell, from a single cell to a, a very complex organism, has inbuilt into it the drive to survive and to reproduce itself. Inbuilt in every single cell of living matter. And in this drive to, to reproduce, to survive, is inbuilt knowledge, one could say, knowledge about self-defense, about defending this organism. Let's not use the word self for organismic responses. We will reserve that for mental, psychological thought constructs. inbuilt into living matter is the urge to survive and to defend itself against anything that would impede or threaten survival. And all of this inbuilt stuff, readiness to defend, protect, all of this is not just in service of living matter, complex organism, which I call me, it is also in defense of this whole network of construction about myself, built up, accumulated over the years, over the millennia. What I think I am and what is included in this I amness, not just the bare thought I am, but I'm this and I'm that. I'm my name, my family, my country, my race, my tribe, my religion, my talents, my capabilities, or the opposite, my failures, weaknesses. What I think I am, which is a an ever more elaborating network of thoughts and memories and feelings and emotions is amazingly well defended by this living organism which has built into itself defenses to keep it going, to keep it from deteriorating or breaking up, being attacked. Can we look at it this way, question it, see whether this is so, which is to look at what happens when we, f we do feel attacked, our person, our ideas, our property, our territory, our family. And I don't mean physically attacked, but psychologically attacked by comparison, innuendo, whatever, criticism, competition, the threat of competition, somebody being better, better than I am, somebody, somebody wanting something or taking something that I think is mine. It may be so, it may just be a mental projection. Watch it. Watch it. It is, it is going on almost all of the time, this 
defensive protective mode of what we've been calling here the me network. Which dates back in its roots to, to the very beginning, not just of our life, but of life of all humankind. Because the ideas that we have about what we are came partly from our parents. There's some new accumulations in this life. But it, it dates back so amazingly far. And is culturally different in different places, in different societies, different cultures, different me feelings are developed by people who we think are independent and free to choose, and yet we show or manifest traits that are common to the group, to the country, to the times. I was always amazed to see my sister when we visit in Switzerland. We grew up together in Germany. And then some Almost 50 years ago, we moved to America. She's, she moved to Switzerland. Now she has such Swiss characteristics and I have such American characteristics, superficially looking. We adapt and adopt new ways, not by choice, because it just happens. Also inbuilt in the organism is this amazing ability to imitate. Little children, little children demonstrated in the strongest way their ability to imitate whether they understand what they're saying or not. The, the, the program is there to, to repeat, to be like someone else, or if conditions are such that there is pain to protest and try to be the opposite, different, which comes from the same root. So, the idea of ourselves that we are so unique Let's examine it. Let's watch it. Where, where our uniqueness, our uniqueness is manifested. Where did our thoughts come from, our ideas, our likes and dislikes, our tastes? Wait. My sister has furnished her house is German Swiss taste. Our house is early American. I liked it. I liked it too, adopted it, adapted to it. What's unique about ourselves? New ideas? Sometimes we have new ideas, and they are really new if they originate in seeing something freshly. Whether it's something in mathematics or science or literature, or in the performing of music, or writing it, even though a lot of musical writing is based on memory and tradition, there's progression in the history of music, or painting, or literature. And yet every once in a while, something new is perceived, and then it becomes a thought, an idea, or a concept. But in perceiving something new, and there's quite a bit of agreement among scientists or artists, 
or whoever is, to, to whoever it's happening, it happens most fruitfully and amazingly when there is no concern about me and my uniqueness, when that is in abeyance and the field is open to see freshly. See what has never been seen before, even though it may have been right under one's eyes. So, what what am I? What are you? What are we? If reference is not made to the network, the body, the mind, the wishes and desires and hopes and fantasies and regrets. Is that all we are? What I think I am, this is what a great philosopher said a few hundred years ago, I think, therefore I am. How true it is in a limited way. I am what I think I am. That's what I think. Or, because thinking is possible, I feel that I am. And with this feeling that I am go un unfurls the whole world history. Thinking in different ways what I am and should be and could be and don't want to be. What are we when we don't think what we are? Is it possible? Yesterday or in, in, in a group meeting somebody said it's impossible to know what we are beyond thoughts. That's true. Thought cannot grasp it. Thought can only grasp constructs and add to them remember them, project them. Is that all we are? The remembering and projecting and knowing carried by thinking and emoting alongside the thinking. Is that all we are? The trees and branches are moving in the wind. There's breathing and all kinds of sensations. <coughs> In being present with the wind and the breeze and the sound, Is there any need for self-reference? I hear it, we say that. I hear it, I can see it, and instantly create or recreate the separate listener, the separate watcher, the separate thinker. Is it solely because we have talked this way all the time? I hear, I think, I, I see. Is it the power of repetition all around us and carried out by this organism talking about itself as doing the thinking, the, the listening, the seeing? And try again. Is it possible to listen without saying, I am listening? There's just the breeze in the leaves, the rustling of branches the coolness touching the body, the breathing in and out. Yeah. 
in saying this, hearing the words, perceiving the sounds and sights. Where is the division among us? Is there any? Is there any separation? Or does it need thought and reflection? Wait a minute. There are 38 separate people here. And maybe each one of us hears it a little bit different. Let's look at that. We, in the first talk, we do... We do go a lot into listening and the impediments to listening, which are created by the self circuit, or the, this me network, wanting things, fearing things, or being so concerned with itself that the, the doors of perception are closed. So there is no hearing of the leaves, because I'm worried about myself or dream about myself in the past or in the future, or argue with somebody who I'm finding fault with, in, in involving the emotions and closing the listening and looking. That's one reason why there may be different listenings. And we've said, said all along, in this self-created or thought-created fantasy world each one of us lives in a good deal of the time. There are as many separations as there are separate little worlds, thought worlds. Because in this thought world, the, the me sits in the middle wanting its fair share and do and aggrandizement and protection and fulfillment of desires. But maybe there is a bit of openness, not complete, there is self-concern, self-attachment, and yet some openness here and there. Is there a difference in listening, except when there is Im Im impairment of hearing, which happens, impairment of seeing, or touching, or tasting, and the senses don't quite work the same? Is that what we refer to when we say there is 38 different listenings here in this room? Because some of it have more acute hearing than others. Actually, I'm not talking about the acuteness of hearing. Even if the, the rustling of the leaves is very faint, or because we're deaf, or put earplugs in, there is no hearing of leaves. There can nonetheless be an openness in which we are not divided. An openness of receiving, perceiving, being, and not ensconced in the private thought world. So, is this a bit clearer that, yes, there are separate bodies. The thing that's always brought up, if I prick my leg with a pin, it bleeds, it hurts. You don't feel the hurt. You're different. Okay, granted. Although some people are so acutely sensitive that they can feel other people's pain. There's a real in-touchness, sensitivity in-touchness, one feels it with people one's very close to. But yes, there are different organisms. Although, we don't have the time here to go into it. 
How different are we really? We all are born of mothers. We all originate if we want to put a time term on it with the meeting of a stir sperm and an egg. So tiny one can't even see it with the bare eyes. All of us were conceived that way. Go through the same developmental cycle, the uterus, and so forth. We're not denying a certain difference among bodies and certainly not denying the difference in private stories. But can we examine for ourselves a question for ourselves whether we are these stories Stories about our life remembered and stories about this body. We think we are. We think this is what we are. And there's a holding on to it. And yet, listen again. What is that? That openness of rustling and crowing and cawing, and breathing, with no thought of me doing it. It needs the thought I am doing it to create a feeling of separation, which is not there even though are different bodies. That's, that does not create a feeling of separation when this imposed network of me thinking is in abeyance then one feels a sudden freedom and spaciousness and connectedness. And love. Not love for this or that, but love pouring from the heart, embracing what's there as it is. Observing how quickly things can close up when this network of private thought world takes over again? Or does it lose its power to take over? Maybe taking over for shorter and shorter periods? I don't know. Find out. Watch it. Are we interested? Are we the separate listener? Are we the separate watcher and thinker? Or is that itself thought? Thought arising from habit. Where do thoughts come from as we sit here quietly? They come, they go, but there is the thought, I have all these thoughts and I shouldn't have them, I wish they would go away, which creates a division between me and my thoughts. Is that a true division or is me and my thoughts also a thought? They're just thoughts. An airplane motor and trees rustling in a cool breeze. These words don't divide because there is no I creating them. They just pour forth. One knows not where from. And needn't know. Caw, caw, caw. Is it just caw, caw, caw? Or is it, I'm hearing the crow. You see what happens? 
or in this openness of listening, all right, I hear the crow, but it does not do damage. It does not cut up or divide because it is instantly seen as thinking. And there's no one doing the thinking. That just happens. Or is there insistence that I am thinking the thoughts? Then find the thinker. Find the thinker. Find the observer. The listener. looking, inwardly listening, inwardly. All there is is thoughts about myself and the world. And more inwardness and looking beyond these thoughts about myself and the world. What is there beyond the thoughts about myself and this world? It is a growing quieter and quieter and quieter. These are rustling and the wind is blowing. Breath is flowing. But there are no thoughts about me and myself and the thinker and the observer. It's just Everything is happening without that construct, which is amazing. It's the, the miracle of presence creating everything on its own. It's not, not well put. There's nothing that's creating it. It is self-creating, happening, with no one doing it. Unless I think, oh yes, I'm doing it, or the Creator is doing it, or life is doing it. Something to hold on to conceptually. And then the thoughts abate again with growing quieter open, listening, being. What is there to hold on to? What is there to get anchored in? Or what is there to lose? What am I when I don't think I am? The heart is, heart is beating. This morning with these incredibly loud thunderclaps, every time the uh, ground shook with that thunder, this heart contracted somewhat and pounded faster. There was no noticeable thought coming in between. It was stimulus and response as one. Because thought can say, well, it is reminiscent of bombs dropping. But little children already, little babies, cry when there's a real loud thunderclap, at least our our son did, our grandson did. Loud noises, there's an instinctual uh, response to it. 
fear response is maybe saying too much. I don't say I did it, but in talking about it, we say I had a faster heartbeat. But it, in, in watching, it just happened. No one was doing it. It is, was so conditioned, so automatic, and abating again, because it was not carried on in a story. And then another clap and another heart beating, faster. Can we leave things alone? Or if we express it in the I mode, I did this or this happened to me, or I chose to, to understand what we're doing, to understand that is just an approximation and partly elusive, illusion creating. To say, my heart began to beat faster. It's a way of saying it happened here, maybe not over there, maybe for someone with different conditioning. It didn't, it didn't happen this way. close being looking, there was no I in there doing it or having it. It just was there as present as the thunderclap. Thunderclap and beating. in this quiet, listening being, without any sense of separation, what more is there to say? We will end here for today.